Welcome back. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to start making these wooden bits. So there's a wooden bit behind here. That ended up being there just because when I was designing it, it just needed something to break up all the brass. And I mean, a bit of engraved wood looked lovely. And also gave it the depth that it needs for the lens to be in the correct position from the mirror. So there's that bit of wood. There's also the wood for the enclosure on it that houses the motor, the Arduino and other bits and bobs and the gauge and things. So I'm going to cut all that out. I've got it sorted out. It's a very unwieldy piece of virtual paper but it's got all the plans of the climatic revelator on there. All the different scenes and bits and pieces. This is probably my original drawing of it where I was figuring out how to put things together. It's so nice just being able to, even though this um, CAD software is so basic, it's really nice and useful to be able to design things and then move them around easily to get the design right. Here's the wood. Oh, it's just started going off. It does that each hour or when there's a change in the weather. It only does it when it's seen movement, so at night it'll go to sleep. Might have to make the paper even bigger actually, I've gone off the edge of it. Looking at this, it does give you some idea of how many different parts there are required to make it up. Having detailed plans certainly helps me to avoid mistakes and makes it very enjoyable, except when I forget to write things down. So, if you watched the last video, the height of the reed switches. There we are, there's my copious notes and copious underlining, so that next time I make one, I'll look at that and think, don't do it, measure it first. Just selecting another piece of the ply, the laser ply. One thing you have to watch out with this, because it's high quality, higher quality than normal, if there's some sort of blemish in the surface of the wood, they cut it out carefully and replace it with another piece of veneer. Absolutely smooth, you'd never know. The only clue is it really doesn't look like a normal knot. So it's all sort of out of context, so I'm going to make sure, I always check that for that now, having made a few stupid mistakes, because if you do get one like that and you cut it out, it's inevitably right in the middle. This side is, however, fine. The other thing they always say about laser ply, they don't guarantee it's not going to be warped. This is pretty good, this, this one, but because the laser has to be so well focused, um, it needs to be the same height all over, so what I do is to get a bit of masking tape, any high points, and just stick it over the edge, wherever it's high, and that just holds it all level, and it cuts perfectly. This time I'm going to try and learn from my mistakes with the reed switches, and I'm going to cut out just one, make it up, check it all works, refine it if necessary, and then hopefully not waste any time and material. These two red areas are going to be engraved on the lower power. If you look at this circle, you can see it's made up of lots of lines 0.1 millimetres apart. And that's for a little engraved sign that tells you about how to reset the uh, when it goes off each hour. Great. Here's the time I'm working on, and there's one with the lid screwed on, it's worked beautifully, and here's the other one. Sometimes when you're making one of these things, you get a part that will just not cooperate. Such a pain. Here's the offending article. I was about to put it on and noticed a little blemish, probably where I'd not worn the cotton gloves and touched it and there's a fingerprint. And I thought, oh, I'll just copiously wipe that off carefully and ended up making complete shambles of it with scratches and all sorts of stuff because there was some grit on the glove I think. Ruined it, resprayed it, just tried to fit it on again and noticed another blemish even though I was wearing cotton gloves. I bet you this will probably end with it cracking as I put it on or something. You, also, you get some parts like this that just will not cooperate. Mm. So satisfying. Cut out perfectly. So nice, all the holes the right side and everything else. Um, here's the engraved parts. You can see it's engraved to perfectly to about 
one and a quarter millimetres deep, which is the height of the engraving laminate, so that'll fit in there. And this front panel, and it actually helps where you see a slight little bit of not burning but a little scorch marks or something that really helps because it's a lot, it gives a lovely effect when it's stained and polished that adds to the look which is great now to put the base together I found with this sort of thing using this laser ply it's brilliant and everything should fit together and I reinforced the corners with some of this um, square pine I think it's 12 and a half half an inch square and that's perfect because it reinforces it all, glue it in with PVA and then it leaves enough room to drill holes and put screws through into the base to fix everything together or indeed to put the front on the top. I will get on and do that now. With the aid of my new super improved plans I couldn't resist but to cut out two lots. I know I said I was just going to make one of these enclosures first to spot any problems and issues and things. But it is so much quicker. It's a very good example using the bandsaw and setting things up like this. That it's so much quicker to do several rather than one lot at a time. Anyway, fingers crossed. In the end I labelled them all. Seemed like a good idea. Duh. And I've started in the corner, thinking about the plans. It's best to start in the corner and then work out from there. A lovely use for the V-blocks again. I just can't get over how I managed to go for so many years without having any. That's so useful. That was so enjoyable, having planned it a little bit better this time. I'm going to go ahead and cut the other lot of laser parts out for the other machine and put that one together as well. It doesn't get much better than this. Baked beans and mashed potato from yesterday. I'm even heating it up. I thought I'd cut out the 10mm components, well, 10mm acrylic, but because it goes at 1.5mm, uh, if only a centimetre, 1.5mm a second, it is a very slow process. As I said before, with this particular laser cutter, um, they suggest not going above 40% power and it's lasting really well. I've heard of people running them at 100% and the tube doesn't last that long or the optics so oh, it's okay. just takes a little bit longer with thicker material. These are coming on nicely. Here's one of the two I completed earlier. I've sanded angles on the dangles at each end. That fits there and then this fits over. Very pleased with the progress so far. It all seems to be lining up and everything else and that's going to sit with about two to three millimetre gap here to allow for um, expansion and stuff. So that's going well. And here are all the 10 millimetre parts, all sorts of exciting things. I'll run through them very briefly. This thing um, supports the LED lamp that illuminates the scenes. I was getting a bit paranoid about having a high power 3 watt LED in a small enclosed space and all the rest of it. So I thought, right, let's uh, take some action so I can sleep easy at night. First thing was to build this huge support for the LED with a finger joint so it can be glued really firmly. I mean, it's such a joy the way that fits together. The LED I used in the end was one of these. I think they're called Keys, K-Y-E-S, I'm not sure. They're really good though, I think this was a 3 watt warm white. And you get that central, that's the LED in the middle, and it comes on this printed circuit board that's got sort of um, heat sink parts to it, and, oops, and a very small transistor and a couple of resistors. Now that is great because 3 watts at 5 volts is a lot of current. I'll put that on the screen. Um, and the Arduino is far too far, far more than the Arduino can supply. I'll just try to if you connected this up directly to the LED, it would just burn that particular circuit out and possibly cause more damage. But with pulse width modulation outputs on the Arduino, it means that this little transistor can switch this LED on and off very, very quickly, thousands and thousands of times a second which means you can't dim it. So the way I'm doing it is the Arduino controls the transistor 
and when for example the climatic revelator hasn't seen movement for a while it goes to sleep it fades down and goes off when it first sees you in the morning or when it you know after an hour's break or whatever it fades up really nicely the rotor function that would fade these up basically with the pulse width modulation output going from zero which is off to 255 or whatever it is i think that was far too bright so i think it goes to 128 or something sort of half power there we go and there's a nice big hole at the back to let any heat out and the heat out the front as i say it's running on about half power or less than that i seem to remember and just a handy reminder for me here to, as another safety feature um, there's three 1N401 diodes here in series connected to the supply pin that means whatever the Arduino does, however much this transistor switched on and off these three diodes will drop the voltage by about 0 0.7, 0 0.5 volts per diode at that sort of current um, and that means even if it's switched on it will still be very very low power so that's good. I think also belt and braces, I think I also included a fuse here because a fuse, as I discovered last year, having gone overboard with fuses everywhere, acts like a resistor, especially a low current fuse. So it adds another resistor and also if something, I don't know what could go wrong, but if something did go wrong the fuse would blow before it could go to full power. Hey, thank you very much. So that's that bit. There's the top bit which I'm really pleased with. Um, this supports the top of the lens assembly, I think we'll call it. And I wanted to base it and make it look a bit like a, a string instrument with the two slots. And oh, that looks really nice when it's all painted. Look okay, at that. Brilliant, and that is what supports. I think it goes that way up, and that supports out of here um, what looks like um, a timpani drumstick that goes in the centre of the chimes to stop them knocking into each other. That's lovely. And there's the assembly for the tensioner, the tensioner assembly, and that works something like this with a spring underneath and two bearings, pulley bearings on it, so that. It actually tightens the um, chain. It's so nice being able to design things like this and you know your imagination runs right with shapes that you can get. Oh, it's just gorgeous and this is just enough of a curve so the engraving laminate will actually bend around it without cracking and will stick to it. So what I'm going to do now is to stain them. No, 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 no. I've got a bigger drill bit than you and this is a three millimeter drill bit and the purpose of it is, which is brilliant, I want to use these posi drive screws to fix the um, the cabinet that's going to hold all the electronics and the motor down to the baseboard and these are posi drive and therefore we never used posi drive on steampunk machines because the Victorians didn't have them. We always use crosshead screws. So what I'm going to do, because with this I've got the piece of wood above and below, so I can't drill a hole straight through because I couldn't get a screwdriver in. So what I'm going to do is to cunningly angle it slightly. It really makes a difference, not too much. So, very wibbly wobbly, but I'll put one there. So they're clearance holes, 3mm clearance holes, so that these posi drive screws will just push through there. And then I can screw them into the base in the correct position once I've got everything lined up. Here's another top tip. If you put a screw, wood screw through here into the baseboard without anything else happening, it will lift up a bit of wood from this side, possibly not from this side, but from the baseboard, and it will lift it the whole thing up a little bit. The answer to that is to countersink it on the underside just a little bit. 
it works a treat because then as you put the screw in and it starts rising a little bit of wood it has somewhere to go to and it won't lift this up at all no you don't just screw them in if you're putting them in at an angle the thing to do is to push them in a little bit just to mark the holes the points they're going to go in then you drill pilot holes because otherwise if you were to screw one of these in it would then tend to pull this out or in depending on the grain it found so I have learnt mark them first and then drill pilot holes thanks very much for watching I hope these videos are useful to people either because you would like to make your own steampunk creation or if you're just interested to see how one's put together hopefully see you next time thanks again